Hey guys, so someone asked if I could do some troubleshooting on small engine carburetors. So I'm gonna do it on this one. And this one could be quite interesting because over the years I've taken bits off this and I can't remember everything that I've taken off or things that I've put on. So this is essentially what you could end up with. So first thing, let's just see, we need some tube. And um, the, we'll check the validity of the fuel pump side, the needle, the gaskets. Oh, here's the piece. And uh, we'll go from there. We have, that's impulse, so. Don't bother putting anything into that. You, you, you can test that, but uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's go on to this inlet bar. Put it on nice and snug. Uh, so we're just going to put about 5 to 7 PSI. See if it holds. If the carb is dry, it may not hold. Don't be shocked by that. Sometimes it needs a bit of moisture, a bit of fuel on this gasket. And also the needle needs a bit of fuel to seal properly too. But we're going to check that. So we said 5 to 7 PSI. And that's holding pretty darn good. There's a very slight leak. I would suggest that's probably just from a dry gasket, but uh, it could also be the needle. We're gonna check that independently. We can always put a bit, let's put a bit of soupy water on there. Oh, well, there we go, we can see it straight away. We have a leak coming out from where the hose connects to this barb, and you can actually hear it now. This hose is on tight. I would suggest that there might be a small crack. Let's, uh, yeah. I suggest there might be a small crack. They're kind of a bit notorious for that, so it probably won't be the end of the world running it like this, but that's only gonna get worse. So let's, uh, they can actually be popped off, the plastic ones. Uh, let me get the screwdriver. It's a bit of a fine one, let me try and do another one. Ooh, there it goes. That will leave with this little brass fitting. Let's just test this independently and actually see if it's the brass fitting that's leaking or put a bit of soapy water on there. That's all it is, just a bit of soapy water. That's no longer bubbling and it's holding firm. So that is our culprit. We'll come back and we'll test that one in a bit right at the end, just for a bit of interest. So we'll put that to one side. Okay, let's take the, uh, the cover plate off and we'll now inspect the fuel pump diaphragms, gaskets, check to see if anything's been put on wrong, see if the screen in here is dirty. And that's the next stage of your testing. Put that to one side. It's good. You can see it's a bit wet. As I said, sometimes you do need a bit of moisture in there. That one, that one. And in here, it's very clean. I think I'd clean this before putting it away. Um, and then over the years, I've been stealing from it. But anyway, the drillings are all clean. The screen's all clean. There's nothing wrong there. Having a quick look at the fuel pump diaphragm, making sure that these little sealing valves, these little kind of U-shaped valves uh, are not curling up or curling down, basically away from from these uh, drillings in the carb. Make sure they're sealing nicely. And I would suggest that they're just fine. Yeah, they're fine with the cover plate on it. There's no worries there at all. And that it's not too hard. It can be quite deceptive because oftentimes on the fuel pump side, these are a different sort of plastic to the metering diaphragm. So if in doubt, swap it out. They're only cheap, it's not gonna be an issue. Then what we'll do, we'll flip over to the fuel metering side. This side has a number of bits that can go wrong. So we'll go into this side now. Take that off. This is wet where we sprayed it. So the difference is uh, diaphragm and gasket on the pump side. And this way, oh, I'm gonna lose my mic back. This way is gasket then diaphragm. Just depends where you're sealing things. Have a feel of this, it shouldn't be clicky. It's not, it's nice and soft, it's supple. That's, that's an absolutely fine diaphragm. Gasket, these can tear as you take them apart, but again, there's nothing wrong with that at all. The water probably helped to soften it up. Then we have this needle here. We wanna test that this needle is actually sealing. What we can do to basically eliminate the gasket being any issues or, or this connection here is we can pop that screen out and we can put A drop of fuel in there, only a small amount, but it does need a drop of fuel for the test to be valid. 
because uh, that needle is, is dry. Let's just push the lever and that will drop it through. Wet it out slightly and dry that off. Now, we're gonna put that same tube over that hole. We're gonna see if it holds. And that's holding just fine. So that needle is holding uh, and that's good. And that's eliminated everything else. That's basically telling us that this needle is doing its job. However, we also wanna check it. So pull out, there's a little spring under here. This needle here is a wear item. Where's my little hand lens? I thought I got it out ready for, I did, ready for this video. This needle is a wear item. Look really closely. Can you see there's a ridge there actually? Uh, open your eyes. There's a little ridge there, about halfway down from the tip of the needle. That is wear. Uh, and it's better to replace it than to run them with that wear. You can run it with the wear, but you'll find that it will give you um, an, an even amount of fuel flow through that hole. So best to replace it and they're cheap, you know, go OEM. Uh, the spring is not really a wear item. You don't have to replace that. The lever is a wear item. Uh, this is actually really good, but what you can see if I zoom in here, this one's, oh, my hands are a bit hot. There's no damp, there's no kind of indentation in there. If there was, that is an indication that it's worn, it's worth replacing. So that's fine, that's fine. The only thing there would need to be replaced is the needle. Then we're gonna check inside the uh, drilling, that metering, or that, no, yeah, that metering drilling, that needle drilling. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna show you, it's hard enough on my end to try and see at the bottom of that. But we want to make sure that there's no dirt, there's no debris. We make sure that there's, uh, there you go, you can see clearly. I wonder if I can zoom you in even more. No dirt, no debris in that little hole. And there's not, that looks to be in really good condition. What you can do if there was dirt in there, a little bit of carby spray on the end of a Q-tip. You might have to actually tighten the, the, the cotton wool or whatever's on the end of it to get it in there. Um, but that's a really good way of doing it. Nothing abrasive. Don't use any abrasive compounds in there. So we've checked that, we've checked that, we've checked that. Then we have a number of drillings. Now these can get blocked. It's very, um, most of the time it's very simple to follow fuel flow. Check this side. On this case, the left screw is the high speed adjustment. So we have, it's very simple if you actually think about, it. let me get a pointer. So vacuum occurs in this area, the diaphragm gets pulled down, it pushes on the needle that we've just put, pushes on the lever that lifts up the needle, fuel comes in this area, and then on the high side, fuel will go into here, which is uh, metered by this adjustment screw. And in this case, this is a semi-fixed jet, which means that fuel can actually also flow through this hole. So you've just got slightly less adjustability on this style carb. Um, so fuel goes in there, in there, and it comes out of that nozzle in there, which we're going to test. And then on the left side, or the right side, sorry, we've got the low screw. And in this case, fuel goes into here. Underneath this Welsh plug, there'll be three drillings there, and there'll be one coming in. And those three drillings correspond to, oh, not that clear, you have one there, which is, sorry, you have one there, which is always in front of always in front of this brass butterfly. Can you see it? Three in total. So one in front, two behind. So essentially you'll have three under there and then one inlet going in. They can block up because they're tiny, very easy to block up. You can change these. Oftentimes if I've got a spare and a carb kit, I'll change them out. Um, so I'll just basically put a pointer in there, pop them out, clean it all out, put a new one in, and you can seal it with a little bit of nail varnish. And then we're gonna test these drillings. So let's unscrew. The jets, find out where they are. Half, one, half, and, and then eighth. And I don't trust that at all because I know I've taken off the little O-rings that were on here. But a uh, good habit to get into. Half, one, half, and then an eighth as well. So these come out. Now, how do we test these? It's super simple. We take hold, or we get some. Spray. Oh. Ideally, start off with something that's not um, too aggressive. A little bit of WD-40 is fine. 
Let's put a few sheets down. So we're going to cover up these two holes and we're going to check that fuel is coming out of that hole. Oh, we're going to cover up that one and that one with our thumb. And we're going to check that fuel comes out, or in this case, inox comes out, which it does. Good. So that passage is clear. Let's come back to that. And then we're going to do the same thing. Finger covers up the hole, open up the throttle butterfly, and into the low side. Oh, look. So you can see. Can you see three clear channels? So we know that the low side and the high side are not blocked, which is great. So there, I don't even bother replacing it. It's fine, it's clean. The next thing we wanna double check is having a look at the needles themselves. Let's inspect the end of the needles. Sometimes people will over tighten them. So uh, that will cause issues. So let's have a little look under here. Uh, the light's not the best, but that is a perfect needle end. And these, are often different sizes. Sometimes they're the same, but uh, this case, it's always the long one, every time I've seen it anyway. If they are different sizes, the long one is the low, the short one is the high. Generally, they'll be different sizes, they have different thread pitch, they have different thicknesses like these, so you can't mess them up. Sometimes you can mess them up, so uh, just be aware of that, try and keep them separate, keep a note of what's what. Here's the other needle, and that is perfect as well. It's clean, there's no deformation on the end, so uh, we know that that's good. The threads are in good condition. And then we're just gonna double check and have a look inside each drilling, make sure there's no dirt, dust, debris. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see with that, but you probably can see in there. Clean, clean. So that's good too. Then what we wanna test, this is a really important one and it's often missed out by people is we want to check that this main nozzle is sealing. It must be wet. Sometimes it's a, a screen, other times, sorry, sometimes it's like a little, uh, a bit of a diaphragm actually in there. Can you see? See a little diaphragm? If you look really carefully and closely, that diaphragm over time can fail and it can stop sealing. And what that will do is at idle, when that should be sealing, it's actually allowing air to come through here and here. It's going to mess up the mixture of fuel. This should only be fuel in here. It will mix, mess up the mixture and you'll end up having lean symptoms at idle, but at wide open throttle, when this diaphragm is open, there won't be any issues. That's a really good telltale sign that your main nozzle check valve, that's what it's called, is failing. This is your main nozzle. That is your check valve. Now these can be pushed out. Sometimes you push them out into the Venturi. Other times you push them from the Venturi out. You just have to check your user manual and they can be replaced. I've done some crazy stuff with these. I've put new diaphragms in there. I've replaced those and they've worked. I've also had the wrong size one because that's all I could buy. And I put it on the drill press and I cut it down to size uh, with a file, I think, or sandpaper on a piece of glass and it worked great. So <laughs> you can do quite a lot. Let's test it. Really good way is we're gonna seal this, seal this, and then we're gonna go into here, and we're gonna just put a little bit of vacuum in there. This is my preference, which is not really good because you're kind of encouraging blue tack in holes, but we're gonna seal that one off with some blue tack. I've tried with tapes in the past and they just don't do as good of a job. Just be careful, don't go too crazy because you might end up not being able to get that back out and then you're stuffed. But that's just what I do and you can do however you like. So what we're gonna do, where did my little piece go? Was that the one I used? No, it was a shorter one than that. I think it was that one. Make sure it's flat. We've sealed those two holes. We're into vacuum. And we're gonna put this on top here. We're gonna seal it down tight. Okay, can you see that it doesn't wanna hold? Yeah. It's not holding very well. You see it's dropping, oh, you can't even see. You see it's dropping down? That could be, a, no, it could be a few things. It could be a sign that this uh, main nozzle is faulty. It could also be that actually air is leaking around that main nozzle, so we're gonna test it out, but it could also be it's leaking under here. Very simple way, let's just pull that out. Pull that out. We're gonna take this main nozzle out. It's super simple. Now some main nozzles go in this way. Oh. And some main nozzles have to be pushed up from the Venturi. This one, I know, goes down. 
take a punch smaller than the hole itself. If it was me, I would uh, take that out and test it independently um, because it's got. If it, if you your test is leak, shows that it's leaking, then you need to replace this or you need to test this anyway. But um, if it is actually turning out to be good and it's just this seal around here or one of those is just sucking a bit of air, then you can put it back in. There's no worries at all. Let's test this independently. This tube here. Now we're gonna go. It's a vacuum, so we're going to encourage a vacuum. And, oops, sorry. Push that right in, make sure it's nice and sealed. So if this leaks now, then we know that's the issue. We need to replace it. If it doesn't leak, then we know actually it's okay. Put a little bit of vacuum on there. Can you see? In this test, it's now actually holding. So that tells me that this valve is actually good. It could either be leaking around here, or it could just be that I didn't bung those holes up very well, or me fiddling around with this little end bit wasn't sealing too good either. So we know we can put this back in. When we put them back in, put them in with just a drop of nail varnish. Greaseproof paper. Very thin amount onto the nail varnish, uh, the nail varnish onto the greaseproof paper. And you literally, I'm just, I should have wiped it off already, but that's fine. Then we're gonna roll this jet in a little film of nail, very, just a tiny, just a tiny. And you can see now it's nice and clear, hopefully. But we've just got a very thin smear on. Right, now we put it back in place before it dries. Because we know it's good. There's no point in changing it. Now, yeah, ideally you'd want to go over that with a little bit of acetone on a cotton bud. Dry it out with the other side. Now, pop it in. Direction doesn't matter. Take your punch. Put it on top. Sorry, I accidentally hit you with the hammer. That's your main nozzle seated correctly and it's sealed. We'll retest it because that might have been a bit of a leak around there. Let's see if it still leaks. It's most likely going to be my... No, can you see that's not leaking anymore? That's a very good indication that that leak was coming from around the actual sides of this valve and now it's been sealed up. Of course, we want to make sure that we haven't accidentally blocked anything with the nail varnish so we'll put pressure through and it should breathe freely. There shouldn't be any pressure build up. And there's not. It goes straight down. But when we go onto vacuum, it should seal. And it is holding just fine. So in that case, that is what fixed it for us. Let's pull this out. You, you just... This is not my favorite method of doing this, but it works. There we go. That's out. And then we'll take this one out and we'll just check that it's clear. If I shine a torch down there, you should see a nice bright light. I'm really hoping someone will be able to give me a better idea that I can then implement on this. And you can see that that's nice and clear in there. If we look down this way, I can also see a light. It's nice and clear. There's no blockages or anything. This linkage here, can sometimes wallow out and it can cause lean conditions. So if you find that when you take this, uh, only the throttle butterfly, not the choke butterfly, uh, if this linkage has any movement in it at all, back, front, side to side, in, out, uh, replace it. 
the whole carb. You can't take that out because the body's well, I'd replace the carb. Um, and the other thing is just making sure that when there's no idle screw holding this uh, butterfly open, that when you look from behind, there's no light coming through. I've had this before. Where's my little torch? The only light that's coming through is through those little cutouts there and there. What can happen is sometimes people take that screw out and they don't reseat that butterfly properly. I'll just show you how to reseat it. If it is taken out, there is often a crimp on the back of here. Sometimes there'll be a bit of that. No, this is fine. So let's take that loose. Let's open this and we're gonna purposely put it back in the wrong place. Maybe not quite that obvious, just slightly off. Tighten it back down. This is what happened on that hedge cutter rebuild that I did. Now let's go over it again. Can you see this light now coming through? There, not so much there, but certainly up there. That will stop you having full adjustability on your idle. Super simple fix. I would suggest any time that screw comes out, put a drop of blue Loctite on there. It's just a bit of acetone on there. See it's a bit dirty. That's all you need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna screw it back in until it's snug, and then we're gonna come out about half a turn. Okay. That's tight, half to full turn. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that we can move this disc and we're gonna let it snap back into place. And then what we're gonna do is double check that those little U shapes are actually in front of the drilling. Can you see? It's not. Can you see that drilling there? This U-shaped cutout of the butterfly should be in line with this. So let's just take a bit of tension off. Put it back there. There we go. Now have a look. You see that hole? It's right over that cutout. And we're gonna put a light behind it. There's no light coming out anywhere, which is exactly what we want. And we'll do that final torque down. Go just to firm, and just a smidge more. Double check that that cutout hasn't moved from that drilling. See that drilling there? And also check from behind, there's no light coming out from anywhere apart from the notches. That's how you reset the butterfly correctly in a carb and that's all good that's all done so the two problems that we had with this carb really the two main ones is this little barb was leaking along its seam and the main nozzle check valve was leaking but the actual valve was good that was really cool that i caught that on camera i promise i didn't know that don't plaster it with nail varnish just a small amount is all you need so let's put this back together and uh, we'll talk about orientations. Oh, oh, that was the last thing I wanted to discuss. This screen, gosh, this screen can be a real pickle. When you work on these screens, uh, if you haven't got good magnification, I recommend that you just either make sure you wash this really well with carb cleaner and let it soak, or uh, you just replace it. They're so tricky to see. What you actually want to do is have the light behind the screen and you want to look through with a, a strong hand lens and make sure, I'm going to do that now, make sure that there's no uh, blockages. It's in, basically impossible to see unless you've got a hand lens and light behind it because it's so fine. This one's actually good. That was, oh, I, I knew that was something I wanted to discuss and that was it. All right, let's put that in place. So really, that needle needs to be replaced. Line everything up nicely. Like so. Don't know if you can even see that. Hopefully you caught that. Little screw, not those, it's that one. No need for Loctite or anything on that. That's fine. I suppose if you wished you could. I never have, I've never had an issue. Screw it down. Uh, this is guy, this is a an M4 into aluminium. Don't go crazy on it. Now we're gonna check the meter and lever height. You can get a tool for that. Very simple. They come uh, as a Woolbro or a Zama, depending on the carb. This is a Zama carb, I believe. This is a probably C1 something, is it? No, oh, it's a Woolbro. W, 
WT. Oh, it is Walbro. Look, there you go. Walbro WT. It's this one here. And that's perfect. It's just touching the needle. What you can do is when we put the diaphragm back on the other way and the gasket and the cover, you can pump air in through the inlet and then you can just see, you want it just to break. And that's how you do that. Nice and simple. You need to set that at the right height. Okay, let's carry on with putting things back together. Needles in, that's in. Uh, these two. Now, remember me saying the long one is the low speed. You can't get these mixed up in this case because the thread pitch is totally different. A little bit of oil on there. Uh, just a little bit of loop. Don't force these. If these, if you're grinding or forcing them, then uh, you need to check what the debris is in there. Gasket first, then diaphragm. Gasket, diaphragm. And if any doubt in the validity of the diaphragm, replace it. They do come differently depending on what comes what in what kit. That little nipple you can see can be different heights. Other side, this one, the diaphragm goes on first. Make sure you haven't got it the wrong way. Make sure they're sealing. The gasket, you can see the witness marks there from the, the little raised rim. So we know that, that goes that way. And everything seems to be lining up really well. What we're gonna do here is just back that needle off slightly so it doesn't interfere. This is your idle set screw. Screw it on. Uh, hope it helps. I'm sure that you guys do things differently. Let me know. I'm always open to uh, learning new ways of doing things. So hope it helped. Enjoy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh, just so you know, if you want to set your idle screw, watch my tuning video if you uh, aren't aware. But uh, close it in till it touches that cam, which is there. And then do one more full turn. That's ready to be tuned. Well, it's not. It needs a load of little bits. It needs the new seals. It needs a new seal on there, the low ring. But, uh, and it needs a new barb. There we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, guys.